Welcome back. I'm Mike from Goliath, and we are here today with another reference design. Chris, you've been working on one for soil moisture sensing. What's that all about? That's right. We are interested in the ag tech space. We've already, you did the wonderful uh, greenhouse design. That was actually a controller that actually did localized um, behavior monitoring and then it took action. This is, uh, you know, controller versus kind of monitor. Uh, and monitor is mostly just sending stuff back to the cloud, not doing any kind of localized stuff. And so that is more of just a sensor gathering kind of thing. And this is something that IoT is built for, right? So it, you have a bunch of sensors, you capture that data, you send it to the cloud, and then you take some action on the cloud, either monitoring trends, uh, making some kind of operational change, in this case, maybe watering more. Yeah, and this, this could be a hugely impactful thing. You know, the uh, agriculture industry uses a very large amount of water through irrigation. And if we can make sure that the right amount of water is going to the right plants at the right time, we can do that more efficiently. And that's kind of what this demonstration is all about. Um, should, should we jump in and take a look? Sure, let's, let's do it. So first things first, uh, we can maybe show my screen real quick just to see what it this normally looks like. It's a you know kind of a deconstructed view right now for the demo, but uh, this is what the this is what it looks like if you're at Embedded World coming up in March 14th to the 16th. Mike and I will be there. We'll be showcasing. We'll be showcasing this demo as well. So please stop by, try it out for yourself. Uh, and yeah, so a couple of things that we're going to be doing here, we're going to be monitoring uh, moisture, light and weather. Uh, we also have things like accelerometers on board because that comes with the, the baseboard that we use. The uh, Spark Fun Thing Plus 9160 has an LIS 2DH on it. Uh, but if you're doing things right, hopefully your sensors are staying where they're staying put where they are. So you probably don't need to move them <laughs> too much. Uh, so what we're going to be monitoring, though, uh, let's start out easily with uh, I'm going to just take my uh, cell phone light and just kind of flood this sensor with light. So we currently are updating every five seconds, both on the the, uh, the console, sorry, not the console. This is a uh, Grafana dashboard here. And so this is what you might have give to your users and us users in this case might be a farm or an operations person at a, you know, a grow, fact grow factory. That's not a thing, is it? No, I, uh, <laughs> nursery, that's the word, you know, there where you the go. trees and the plants and all those things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so they would probably have a detailed view like this of just a single sensor and they want to be able to view what's going on with that single sensor. Obviously, the weather data here, uh, you know, my, as my heat kicks on and off, it is winter here where I live. Uh, not too bad, but you would see kind of trends over time there. Obviously, I'm in a controlled environment. And as I just move this thing back and forth, you can see it's pretty responsive. Uh, and you would want to have light data in order to see, is this plant getting adequate sun? Uh, what is kind of the characteristics here? And probably you want, if you had these kind of scattered across a nursery, for instance, say you had trees in the area, you want to make sure that you're not getting too shaded, that sort of thing. Yeah, but, in that central okay. column, you can see that the number went right down when you took that, that phone away. Uh, but also, you know, for historically, if, if you're having a harvest and you're like, there's a lot more yield on this harvest, you can look at it and see not only what were the light levels at different times, but what were the qualities for that light? Like, are you getting filtering from forest fires and they're cutting that down or some other thing? You might be able to, uh, you know, have better farming just because you're using the data that's available to you. That's a really good point. Yeah, when you start doing those like longitudinal studies across like a whole season, like you're saying, like crop monitoring, it really can have a lot of impact. And it's so hard to know, you know, even if you have someone going out once a day and recording levels, um, that's a really onerous task for something that might not have a lot of payoff. But if you're just doing this naturally because you already have this thing out there, well, then you could start to, to make smarter decisions. Speaking of smart decisions, like you mentioned, we're trying to save water here. Uh, so on the left side here, uh, we have a couple things. Uh, we have, when the last update is, obviously this thing is updating pretty frequently for every five seconds or so. We have the raw reading, and then we have kind of this, this icon here, which I created. And uh, the device is actually sending back kind of bucketed data. And that is, I'll show how that's working in a second here, but you also would have seen similar things with the greenhouse, or sorry, with the green demo, not the greenhouse demo, the green demo from our embedded world thing last year, and also the trash can demo, which we've, or the trash can uh, reference design, which we've shown here on YouTube and our blog in the past before. Uh, and yeah, so what we want to do is we want to actually set thresholds. I actually wrote about this uh, in on the Goliath blog, uh, and this is a glib, uh, why, why should you bother calibrating? And this all came from the fact that this uh, sensor that I'm using here, it's a pretty simple capacitive sensor, you know, not ne necessarily something you want to put in the field. We'll talk about that in a little bit later, 
but the calibration method for it is basically stick it in water, make it dry, linearly interpolate between the two. Okay, well, what if I don't need to linearly interpolate on the device? I can just instead set the thresholds and dynamically change things there. And uh, that's really useful. Um, All right, so we actually oh. have a way of simulating that here. I'm gonna put that full screen up. So this is a down camera on Chris's desk. Uh, mm -hmm. On the bottom, you can see the light sensor, a little bit of flashing there from, from the IR on it. But on the top you have uh, on a wire, the, the moisture sensor itself, which is like you said, capacitive and some very, very wet soil. That's right. Yeah, so <laughs> wet that it is just water because I didn't uh, I didn't want to get my lab all dirty. So what I'm going to do, though, is just dunk this thing in water. What we should see here is we should relatively quickly start to see the moisture reading uh, increasing. Oh, sorry, decreasing. I'm sorry. That's the uh, that's the uh, uh, here is that it goes down and you see it does dip 3, down there. Now. It's going down now. Yeah. Oh, so a big we cliff. There thing, we it's go. actually the amount of coverage that we have uh, of the overall sensor. Like I said, it's a capacitive sensor. So the more that it gets covered, the more that it uh, the lower the reading drops there. And there we go. So as we start to obviously this thing doesn't have a lot of uh, vertical distance into the soil here. So it's not once again, we'll talk about a little bit about, you know, the application of this specific sensor versus, uh, you, know, you know, an industrial environment here. But we can start to see as I dunk this thing in and out of water, we start to see uh, those readings bounce back and forth, which is great because we want to just be able to ensure that we can have these different uh, different readings here. Now, the next thing I want to do is just showcase on the Goliath console how I'm actually setting these these levels. I am just pushing. I basically look at the raw values that are showing up on the console, and then I set some arbitrary values here to say, well, bucket zero should be at 3,300, and bucket 100 should be at when it's below 2,600. And then that basically on the device it sends back these bucketed values that says, hey, I'm about about 0%, about 20%, about 100%. All of the different values that it sends back, that is calculated on the device. We push these settings down to the device. It sends the bucketed values back up to the cloud. And then we can display these different uh, icons like we showed on here uh, based on that. Now, this is still showing 20 because a little bit of moisture still left on the sensor, but it uh, it does dry out over time as well. And really, this is a slow process, right? Uh, you know, you're not going to be dunking things you might see when you're watering throughout the day, you might see some slight changes there. You might be able to see when the event actually happens. Did it actually happen? But you're probably going to see much, mostly a slow decline over the day. Then it watered and then it comes back up and then again, slow decline over the day. Yeah. And so a lot of times you actually see the multiple sensors used at different depths. And so being able to, to set the values of those, like, do I need to get down to you know, the third sensor deep for this particular crop? Does it have deep roots? I think all of that is um, things that you want to be able to uh, easily adjust without ref reflashing firmware or anything. You can pull out your phone and hit up a dashboard and alter that that way. Um, now, these are just demo sensors, which is fine. I mean, it's it's kind of the same process. Like once you have the data getting up to the cloud, doing some something with it is kind of the key of IoT. But you've also been specking out some like industrial, like hardened sensors. What are those all about? That's right. Yeah. So if I think about it, this is like the starter soil moisture uh, demo, then the advanced one would actually have uh, things that are a little bit more industrial, a little bit better for the field. This one is a uh, off the shelf sensor that you can buy that has, it's, it's potted in here. So that means that all the electronics are uh, sealed uh, and watertight. Uh, there's uh, some different probes that go into the soil here. So this one is a, this one is just, just moisture. Uh, I've got a couple of different ones here. There's one that is just pH, right? And that's this one here. And finally, the granddaddy of them all, which is of them all. Uh, this one does temperature, moisture, conductivity, <laughs> pH, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Uh, and really, when you're doing soil science, right, you really want to have a lot more of that data there. And so, if you're interested in this sort of thing, we are looking to do this in future reference designs. This one, the fancy one, is RS485. There's also just some uh, analog measurement as well with a higher voltage uh, output there. And so, if that's interesting to you, we would love to chat with you about it. Um, and that's, you know, Mike and, here, Mike and I are here to build more reference designs. Uh, I think the big thing, though, is that the, you know, the Alidel Mini form factor is meant more for show rather than go. Uh, so this thing is not waterproof. We do this so that we can have a lot of different form factors and a lot of uh, interesting things. Hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll sh show some of the more interesting things that Mike's been working on in future videos here. And at Embedded World, I'm very excited about that. Um, 
but not watertight. Uh, the old Aludel, right? The Aludel original, uh, that is a uh, form factor that is actually built into a waterproof container. And that really starts to um, change the, the math and also the size, right? It's literally like yeah. this much bigger, so. But I think one of our goals here at Goliath is that we have a platform that's built to scale. So the, the platform that you are prototyping on with these sensors right now that are not hardened is going to be the same platform when you get these industrial sensors up and running, even though there's a lot more validation and hardware and stuff that goes into that, you've already got the data structure in place. And so that's the right. system grows with you. You don't hit a certain, you know, tripping block where you then have to tri change over and be like, okay, let's go to production with this now. The cloud is growing with your needs. And I think that that uh, kind of empowers people to try things out, get them working and then go and scale without anything standing in your way. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think, you know, to, to talk about another thing that we have built into the platform, uh, say you had an Aludel Mini, right, in this kind of form factor, and then you had that kind of hardened Aludel waterproof, you could have the same uh, variables being sent back, like Mike said, and you could be able to switch between them seamlessly so that they're, you know, sending back the same variables, uh, but one might be ready for the field. Well, you can even help to uh, delineate which one's which by using something called blueprints. That's a Goliath feature that makes things really easy to be able to showcase not only that these are different things out in the field, but also that I want to target over the air updates to one versus the other. And I want to be able to understand more about the hardware that's on one versus the other. And that's just kind of a easy way to, to showcase that these are uh, different things and have the same data, but have different requirements when you're trying to modify and control them. Now, we'd love to hear what your applications are for these type of sensors, whether it be in agriculture or any other industry, you can hit us up uh, devrel at goliath.io for a meeting. We'd love to talk to you. If you have questions or you have ideas for future deployments, the forum.goliath.io is another great place to share those ideas. People are talking about what they're building there and you may be able to get some inspiration for your own fleet.